So the Bible tells us about a religion that beheads Christians for the testimony of Christ. That's right. This religion is Islam. So we are not going to be heckled from talking about the persecution of the church. Now the Quran tells us that Allah is a father to none. So Allah is not a father. So there's some key issues here. They say that they love Jesus, yet they deny everything he stands for. They say that we worship the same God, but their God is not a father. He proudly tells us he's not a father. They are called slaves. Jesus calls us sons. It's consistently inconsistent. <laughs> Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Yes, and this is a topic Amen. today, the persecution of Christians in Speaker's Corner. Um, we're going to introduce this topic in, in two ways. And strangely enough, this was actually th this topic was actually right. brought together by Shamsi. Yes, you, you might you might laugh at this and wonder what what has a Muslim got to do with the persecution of Christians? And it was in a response to a video, and I saw three Christian brothers on mm. on the video yeah. uh, uh, yeah. as the title credits from DCCI, and there were brother um, Kane, thank you, um, Godwin, Godwin, and um, was it Daniel. Yes, it was yeah. Daniel. And they use beautiful pictures of them, they're handsome young men. And um, they look good on the video. And in the video, um, Shamsi said something. The video title is, Why Missionaries Are Preaching More Islam Hate Than The Bible by Du Sunnah Dawa. That's the YouTube channel. So why are we Christian missionaries? I know we weren't mentioned specifically, no. but we're all the body of Christ, so I do have the right to speak on behalf of our brothers. Yes. Um, Islam is a doctrine of devils and can you explain what a doctrine of devil is from 1 Timothy 4 chapter uh, verse 1. So. 1 Timothy 4 1. Now the spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You want me to go on? Yes. Speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Okay, speaking lies in, uh, in hypocrisy. Yes. I'm going to mention this one first of all. Shamsi in the video when he was doing the presentation with me about the flying carpet mm. after he called me a clown yeah. and you know was not really nice in that yeah. sense. He said Ibn Kathir is not right. a scholar yes. but in the video he did with Paperboy a, a few weeks later he used Ibn Kathir as yes. a quote. Yes. So that is hypocritical. Yes. When we were trying to make a point, you said Ibn Kathir was not right. So and then, you did it because it was your main argument, or it was one of your strongest yes, arguments. It was a strong so, argument. So he hastily rejected yes, it. Yes, the tafsir yeah. explains the flying yeah. carpet. So the Islamic Dawah is built on silly fables of the flat earth yeah. that we can see in the Quran. Yeah. Other fables, the Nun of Allah, the whale which carries the earth on its back. That is another fable of Islam we cannot agree with. The flying carpet of Solomon that Ibn Kathir states that had a throne for 60,000 jinn. Yeah. Another fable, camel urine cures diseases. That is another crazy mm. fable. The well of Buddha, that is uh, um, with um, women's um, rags and um, you know, dirty, dirty dead dogs, yeah, yeah, yes, right, yeah. it, it, it's, uh, it's clean. That is a crazy fable. Allah turned Jews into rats and pigs, according to the Quran. Another crazy fable. The Prophet Muhammad saw monkeys stoning another for adultery, mm. so he joined in and we get the stoning verses of adulterers. That is another Islamic fable that we don't agree with. Um, a stone stealing Moses' clothes and he ran after it naked because he was ashamed of his mm. um, genitalia. Now that is another crazy fable. The sun rises through the horns of Satan and sets in a muddy spring of water, another Islamic fable that we cannot agree with and a multitude of other crazy stories in the Quranic uh, narrative. Believing these stories can send you to eternal damnation. And this is where the clash is with um, the Quran and the Bible, in terms of specifically when they say that it's come to confirm. It's a big issue. Just earlier, I was trying to say to Lamin, I mentioned a crucial point, which I think is important. As of fact, I think it was the most crucial point regarding the resurrection, which you tried to put aside. So here we have a book saying that it's come to confirm. Not only is it not confirming, it's going against. It's an actual antithesis against everything that biblical doctrine stands for. Not just one or two points, but the key point to do with salvation. To do with salvation, yeah, the, yes. The two can't tally. The two just can't tally together. And That's you would I'm say saying. that yeah. the gospel message of salvation is so important yes. that we must use any means necessary 
to try and get people to wake them to the truth and reality that our Lord Jesus Christ Absolutely. died and to, on the yes, cross and for to try and brush it aside will not do will to not. try and brush it aside will not do and say it doesn't matter um, Sora 415 very much matters it matters everything in the world you know salvation hangs on it either ours hangs on it or their hangs on it quite simply in a nutshell if Sora 4157 is correct then we're in trouble then my Christian faith is debunked so however if it's, if it's wrong then their faith is in trouble can you say we as Christians can rebuke false doctrines that we, because we've clearly shown that Islam is a doctrine of devils yes. in, a, in one yes, biblical passage. Yes, we can be biblical scripture. So I'll read 2 yeah. Timothy verse 3, 1, 6. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof and for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. Preach the word in, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering yes. and doctrine can you explain what that long-suffering is patience patiently yeah patience and and patience is what we're either need to learn here are learning and need to continue to learn patience when when teaching so you would say the dcci team and those brothers that were accused they are patient trying to tell the muslims they're wrong in their full stop very very much so and yes. also other missionaries yes. like yes. paper yes. boy yes. and bob yes. that the waste their time in minus two that, that's right like yes. soko and yes. the camera yes. people yes. They are long-suffering, yes, trying to ensure... Yes. the fact that, that they hear week in and week out, and not only week in and week out, but trying to explain and, and, and define and explain stuff biblically and asking questions, which is a part of the, the explaining. Well, one thing about Muslims is that they don't believe Mon in our Bible. Yeah, yeah. So they always go on about the monotheism. So this is where I'll bring Hadith Sahih Bukhari, 1071, Book 17, Hadith 5, narrated by Abbas, the Prophet I prostrated while recited and Najam and with him prostrated the Muslims, mm. the pagans, the jinn and all human beings. So Muhammad led a prayer mm. and the Muslims, the pagans and the jinns mm. and all human beings followed this prayer. Mm. Wouldn't you find that to be paganism? That how can the pagans worship the God? Can pagans worship the well, God is, of Israel? It is, it is a bit strange, not without some conditions, not without certain conditions. Okay. Because it's like, for example, just saying that somebody would just naturally come and worship Jesus without confessing that Jesus is Lord first. The Christian persecution by Islam is biblical prophecy. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the take remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ the test so we will say that the devil doesn't want people to hear about absolutely salvation not. absolutely not and all the statements that Jesus himself made about who he was which essentially ties into what one needs to do to receive salvation Jesus said whoever believes in me has eternal life and Jesus is God in the flesh first Timothy 3 16 and without great converse, uh, controversy and the mystery of godliness God was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on the world and received up in glory. Mm. And Whosoever denies the Son, the same has not the Father, but he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Uh, Quran 9.30 is the Antichrist verse of the Quran. Mm. They do say Ezra is the son of Allah. The Christians say the Messiah is the son of Allah. This is a statement from their mouth. They imitate those that disbelieve before them. May Allah destroy them, how they are deluded. Now. A lot of Muslims will try and deny this point. They will say that, oh, it doesn't mean fight Christians. Yeah. So I'll go into Tafsir Ibn Kathir on 9.30 to 31. Fighting the Jews and Christians is legislated because they are idolaters and disbelievers. Mm. Allah the Exalted encourages the believers to fight the polytheists. That include mm. disbelieving Jews and Christians who uttered this terrible statement and utter lies against Allah the Exalted. As for the Jews, they claim that Uzziah is the son of God. Allah is free from what they attribute to him. As for the misguidance of the Christians over Isa, it is obvious. This is why Allah declared both groups to be liars. Yes, uh, mind you, it is, it is quite clear as well here without the Tassir. It's very clear here on its own because it's telling you that to fight, but it's also telling you why to fight. It says fight those why who don't believe in Allah or the last day. 
So it's not defense. This is clearly not I, defense. I'm, I'm going to be the Abdul here, the slave of Allah in this yeah. case. Yes. And I'm saying that you're a lying Christian, as uh, yeah. my tafsir tells me to call you well, a liar. Well, I'm not, because that's what I'm saying. Two things are going on here. It's but, no, it's the pagans in Mecca. It's nothing. <laughs> no, it's, it's, your Quran. it's the eternal word of God. It's saying that you must fight, and it's saying why you must fight. It's saying that you must now fight. Now we have a Muslim heckler. Thank you. Why Thank you, you for fight. adding. Thank you. It's saying you must fight, and it's saying why for not believing in Allah. So as a Muslim, you're supposed to fight me for not believing in Allah. So you fight me and there's a reason why you fight me. This is not defense. This is not defense. This is an attack for not believing in your God. That's clear there. So I'm saying that's clear on its own without the tafsir. And that just adds to it. But you can leave that aside and just hear it's clear. You're fighting because I don't believe. So fight me for my disbelief. Can I just make a mention? Please. This Muslim guy has made a very, very good. It's thank you for you. thank you for this. Yeah, thank you for this. Um, thank it's good to yeah, get them on call. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Because we're going into the five yeah. pillars of Islam, and you've given us perfect evidence to expose the truth. So you are actually hiding these things. Go away, you shy. 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 You must be beautiful. Anyway, let's not get distracted. So, I'll go to Quran 8:12. Yeah. When your Lord inspired to the angels, I am your, with you, so strengthen those that believe. I will cast terror into their hearts of those who disbelieve. So strike them upon their necks and strike them every That's right. fingertip. That's right. This is because they have opposed Allah and His Messenger. And anyone who opposes Allah and His Messenger, Allah invokes a severe penalty. That's right. Now, if you look at... And I think there's 905, isn't there, if you've gotten to that? So a 905 as well? Yes. I believe, yes. But I'm going to ensure that we... These yeah. guys want to destroy... Yeah, yeah of course. Revelation yeah. 20, verse yes. 4. let's read. Right. And they saw enough. thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they and they lived and reigned with Christ for Amen. a thousand years. Amen. So the Bible tells us about a religion that beheads Christians for the testimony of Christ. That's right. This religion is Islam. So we are not going to be heckled from talking about the persecution of the church. Perfect. When our Christian brothers in the Middle East are crucified in Syria, yes. when our Christian brothers in the Philippines are blown up in churches yes. when our Christian brothers in Nigeria are burnt alive serving their God we are not going to be silenced by a few ignorant people in Speaker's Corner right. Right. and we're going to call because Jesus is Lord and they're the martyrs they are the saints that will reign with Christ eternally Amen. thank you very much Amen. so please no more heckling let us do this in a civil manner so one of the things that we do get with, um, and I, I like so-called films, cameraman JC. He's done very, very important things. He tried to lead the Muslims to try and be concise in their message. Yes. And he always tells them, do not argue with the people of the book. Do not argue with the people of the scripture except for a way that is best except for those who commit injustice among them and say we believe in that which has been revealed to us and revealed to you and and our god and your god is one lies and we are muslims in submission to him the meaning those who turn away from the truth turning a blind eye to the clear evidence being stubborn and arrogant that means us christians we're being stubborn and arrogant to accept islam mm. in this case it's to progress debate to combat fighting them in such a way to deter them to commit aggression against you Verily Allah is all strong, and it references Quran 57.25, Jabir saying, We are commanded to strike with the sword whoever opposes the book of Allah and is saying. So this is what causes the persecution of Christians. It, it is not um, fake Muslims like they say ISIS are yeah. not real. No, 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 ISIS no. are Muslims. Yeah. Yeah, Any, yeah, yeah. Boko Haram are Muslims. Muslims. That is where, where Boko Haram comes real from. Muslims. It has the biggest Islamic scholarly in West Africa. Right. All the jihads in West Africa over a thousand years um, no, sorry, from the 15th century yeah. by Queen Amina of Zaria right. started from that region. Okay. And it was Kanuri tribesmen. That's why Libya, southern Libya, used to be part. Yeah. So when the weapons were taken from um, when Gaddafi's regime fell, those weapons fall into Boko Haram's Zaria because yeah, yeah. it's the Kanuri. It's the same old slave trade route and the route of um, jihad from centuries. Mm, mm. So this is nothing new. This is them practicing the Islam 
because um, when the British came to that part of the world, they did not colonize them. They left them in indirect rule and the emirs and the sultans, so they've always yeah, flourished yeah. the Islamic narrative. So it's a lie when Muslims say that these areas are nothing to do with Islam. They're more Islamic and they follow Sharia and they always have and they always will. Mm. Do you know where the Islamic prayer comes from? The five times a day they, uh, they pray? Guess. Thanks to Moses. Thanks to Moses, right. yes, they say, Leviticus 26 verse mm. 1, can you please quote, because we hear Moses. Leviticus 26 1, because when Muslims pray, they bow to the Kaaba stone direction. They say they don't worship the stone, but um, they say Moses was the one that taught the prayers to come down to five. So let's just see what Moses says about uh, praying towards stones. From verse 1, yeah? Yes. You shall, what? You shall make you no idols, no graven image, neither rear you in a standing image, neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto them, for I am the Lord your God. So the Bible specifically yes. says, do not bow to a stone. This is what Moses gave as a Leviticus law. So the same Moses cannot be in heaven and have amnesia and somehow tell Muhammad to get the prayers down from 50 odd to five. So this is a falsehood. That is a falsehood of Islam. Another thing about Islam is the Shahada and thankfully some Muslim is here screaming the Shahada. <laughs> you heard it here, he was trying to drown us out. Uh, are you going, please, sing, scream the Shahada, scream the Shahada, please scream. He's got the devil's name. Yo, I shall not let Allah worship Muhammad Rasulullah all day, all night. Allah Akbar all day, all night, bro. Fair play, fair play. Fair play, fair play. The characteristics of the Sabi religion. The Sabian knew God as Rabba al al Liha, Lord of Gods. And yes, I can see. And Ila al al Ha, or whatever, God of Gods. During meditation, during meditations, they spoke to angels. Muhammad and his companions were often compared to be Sabians, specifically because the Sabian Shahada, La ilaha illallah. So, the, now if you read the book, yes, I don't know how to pronounce Arabic, unfortunately. But the good thing is, and this was important, the Sabian religion existed more than 2,000 years before Islam. So the Islamic Shahada is pagan. This is, the Sabians were the same people sent by Satan to destroy Prophet Job's family. And the Lord said unto Salem, Hast thou considered thy servant Satan. Job? Yeah, and the Lord said unto Satan, sorry, Hast thou considered thy servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect man and an upright man, and one that feareth God and eschewth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God or not? Hast thou not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his sustenance is increased in the land. Where do you want me to go to? But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power, only upon him put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Where do you want me to go to? Yeah, continue. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came now, a messenger unto Job and said unto the oxen, and said the oxen were ploughing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword and I only am escaped to tell them. So who sent the Sabians to kill Job's family? Satan. Satan. So now we know oh, that, yes, yeah, or oh, Allah, sorry. I, I, I always mistake Satan's name. Sorry, you're Allah. No, you're not Satan. Yes, Allah sent the Sabians mm. or Satan, whatever mm. you want to call him, mm. to destroy the prophet Job's family. The book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible. It was authored by Moses. I think it's 2100 BC. Yeah. That is the dating of it. It's a very yeah. old book. Um, so the Sabian religion existed way before Islam. Now, we talked about the Shahada. They took it for the Sabians. Um, they stole it from the Sabians. But this is also another very important, interesting hadith. And it says, um, a Jew came to the Prophet and said, you are setting up rivals to Allah by associating others with him. You say whatever Allah wills and you will, and you say by the Kaaba. So the Prophet commanded them, if they wanted to swear an oath to say by the Lord of the Kaaba and to say whatever Allah wills, then what you will. So now we're seeing that Muhammad was actually accused of committing shirk by the Jews at the time of his um, um, ministry or whatever you mm. want to call it, mm. uh, his prophethood. So he definitely brought a shay uh, 
a, a shahada that is shirk. Muhammad was accused of committing shirk by the Jews, mm. and the shahada is shirk because the Muslims are associating a partner with Allah. Yes. The fasting, the, the fasting of um, Islam, actually doesn't come from Islamic sources. The fasting was um, conducted in Islamic um, region long before Muhammad. It is actually a Sabian practice as well. Um, there was a month that the Arabs would stop fighting mm. and um, it was a holy month. So that was also copied. Do you have anything more to add on to um, the... Well, no, I'm just thinking, I was just thinking of the whole ritual of when we talk about paganism. There's a couple of stuff, as we said, we mentioned that Jibril being Muhammad's Lord. You know, there's a kissing of the black stone. There's a mention of Muhammad's name in the prayer. The whole thing is ritualistic and pagan. And you usually find that rituals are pagan. Certain so ablution, the way they sort of wash themselves, etc. It's all ritualistic and repetitive and pagan. Okay, so how do I prove to you that it's pagan? Because Muslims will call us liars. And this is narrated by Abu Huraira. On the day of Nah, 10th of the whatever, in the year prior to the last Hajj, mm. so the last Hajj that Muhammad did, mm. when Abu Bakr was the leader of the pilgrims in the Hajj, Abu Bakr sent me along with other announcers to Mina to make a public announcement. No pagan is allowed to perform the Hajj after this year. And no naked person is allowed to perform the tawaf around the Kaaba. Mm. So in the last year up to, to Muhammad's death, pagan, uh, pagans were walking around the Kaaba naked. Mm. So uh, now can you imagine someone going around the Vatican? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that a pagan ritual walking around? I mean, I don't walk around my bedroom naked. Mm. I, that, that's a, I don't want to let people into yeah. the things I do, but I wouldn't do that. Uh, I'm that modest. Yeah. So how can you say something is holy or venerated? and walk around naked and say that, yes, Pagans. this is, it is a pagan mm. ritual. Mm. Were they shaved before they went home? I, I, I don't want to go into the details of <laughs> what the... I, 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 I they do what? I, I'm very they curious They shaved their uh, shins and oh. they went home. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what what in like Allah? <laughs> there was also another hadith, which is Sahih Bukhari 1648. Ah, right. uh, and it says, did you, like to dis did you dislike to perform tawaf between Safa and Marwa? He said, yes. It was of the ceremonies of the day of the pre-Islamic period of ignorance till Allah revealed verily as Safa and Amara among the symbols of Allah. It is therefore no sin for him to perform the pilgrimage to the Kaaba. So this confirms that the pagans were already doing the ritual before the Muslims. So we've looked at all the five pillars of Islam and we've stuck apart from charity which is universal in that everything they do is pagan. Ah. Right, now why are we saying all this? Why is it all important? Because why? I, I would start by saying the Quran makes a claim that it came to confirm the previous scriptures. Now, if you can come to the conclusion that it's not doing that, not only is it not doing that, in all the key points it's of denying them and opposing the scriptures, then one has to ask the question, am I following it, it, uh, uh, Am I following a book that's making a claim that it's not actually making? Or is it making a claim that it's actually making? The claim is this, the, previous, the, the Quran has has come to confirm the previous scriptures. I say this repeatedly all over the Quran. That's all it spends its time saying. It's not an issue of saying it here and there and everywhere. It spends its time saying that directly and indirectly. It implies it, it alludes to it, it says it directly, it says it indirectly all over the Quran. And as I said before, from Surah 2, without stopping, from Surah 2 to 23, it says it in one way or the other. So the question to ask is, is it fulfilling its claim? Is it coming to confirm the scripture that came before it? The answer is no, because it's essentially denying the deity of Jesus Christ, it's denying the crucifixion of Jesus Christ in Surah 4, 157. That's the biggest lie ever that you can't look over. It says that the Jews, there's several problems with that. Let me get to them firstly, because this is why we're here. It's denying the gospel that it's claiming to fulfill. So therefore it has to be rejected. Perfect. Jesus is quite clear. He said, whoever believes in me has eternal life. So the scripture tells us that Jesus was born of a virgin. It said that Jesus died for our sins. The Quran says, no, he didn't. This is essentially what's going on. Jesus is the son of God, the Bible says. The Quran says, no, he isn't. Jesus is the only way to God. The Quran says, no, he isn't. Jesus is the final prophet that's come to fulfill all the scriptures. The Quran says, no, he isn't. Jesus said that he will leave his Holy Spirit to guide us. The Quran says, no, that was Muhammad. It's a bundle of mess that can't be reconciled. So now let's look at what the scriptures say. Let's look at what they actually say very briefly and we'll conclude what the Quran is not confirming, which is the claiming to confirm. Let's start with Romans 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord, Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. saved. Now verse 10 is interesting. 
It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So look at the way this is turned around. So first of all it says, if thou shalt confess to thy mouth. And then in verse 10 it says, it starts with the heart. If you believe in your heart, then it will lead to confession. So if man believes in his heart, and then it leads to confession, that's this gospel, that is the gospel. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. But can the Quran just, says no. Can not I so. just intercede? Yes. So when we see the DCCI team, because we talked about persecution, yes. and when they're being heckled and they say Jesus Absolutely. is Lord, they are confessing the gospel of Christ. Yes. 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 So that is the gospel, That's right. our Muslim audience. Yes. It is not reading 1,000 pages. It's declaring that Jesus Christ yes. is Lord, Absolutely. that he's God in the flesh. Yes. So now let's be clear. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah. That's everything that's written in the scriptures. Yeah. Now Muslims claim that they love Jesus. They don't. I'm sorry to tell you. You love Isa, whoever that is. But Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Again, the Quran is saying no. It keeps saying no. This is the book that's come to confirm. It can't make up its mind. It keeps saying no to everything. Not only is it saying no, it's saying no to all of the essentials. It's saying no to what essentially sums up to be the gospel. And therefore we have to come to the conclusion that the Quran is telling a lie. It says it's come to confirm. It's not doing any confirming. And it's Allah a bad is editing. Deceiver. Yes, it's a bad editing job. Just imagine if somebody edited this. They've edited out all of the essentials. If you, it's like doing an essay, as most of us have done at some level of study. You know, you start off and you say, "I'm going to talk about A, Y, and Z," and by time, and that that's in the um, that, that, like in the premise, in the preface, and then the content of that essay or that dissertation is supposed to be doing what you claimed at the beginning. If by the time you reach the end of that essay, you haven't done so, you fail. You will fail. So that's what the class. It comes on the scene saying, we have come to confirm this, that and the other. And then when you look at the details, it hasn't confirmed. Not only is it not confirming, it's denying. And not only is it not denying, it's denying all of the essentials of the gospel. That Jesus came, was buried, was crucified, buried and resurrected. That is the gospel in a nutshell that the Quran is denying. It says the Jews boasted that they killed the Messiah. This is insane. The Messiah that the Jews are waiting for, the Quran is telling us that they're boasting that they killed him. Not only did they kill him, they're boasting that they killed him. And then it goes on to say they killed him not. Neither did they crucify him, but it only appeared to be so. Denial, Surah 4157, the biggest lie in the Quran. It's a biblical lie, it's a theological lie, and it's a historical lie that can't be reconciled. And we have to challenge that lie because anyone that believes that lie, they're going to eternal damnation. Yes. And this is the importance of this message why we have to stand up. We don't mind you heckling or abusing us or persecuting us, but we'll tell you the truth. Jesus is the only true way to salvation. Now the Quran tells us that Allah is a father to none. So Allah is not a father. So there's some key issues here. They say that they love Jesus, yet they deny everything he stands for. They say that we worship the same God, but their God is not a father. He proudly tells us he's not a father. They are called slaves. Jesus calls us sons. It's consistently inconsistent. The, it the scriptures in between the Quran and the Bible are consistent in its inconsistency. So we love our, uh, our Muslim uh, counterparts. We have to love them. And when we say we love Muslims, it doesn't mean I'm going to go do a big group hug and no. hold hands and run around the campfire. That is not <laughs> what the love means. That love means that we obey the other commandments. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not love bear false witness. So that means that if you're doing takia and say, hey, I love you, my I, I know you're lying because you don't love me by being angry or attacking our churches or heckling me. That is not love. You're perverting the gospel of Christ. I will go into um, what the scripture says. You have to ask for forgiveness. We need to bring people to repentance. Mm. And this is what we here are going to do. If you do not ask for repentance and accept Christ as Savior, you're going to go to eternal damnation. So I think we'll conclude it with uh, a final message to ensure that those that don't have an idea of Christianity can see how they can seek that salvation. To read yeah, read it. Yeah, read okay. it. Okay. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and let the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will give mercy, have mercy upon him and unto our God, for he is abundantly pardoned. So that is what you seek the Lord in truth. Declare Jesus as Lord, read the gospel, and the rest will be done by the Lord. It is not your works, you cannot do good deeds. So seek the Lord, seek the story of Jesus Christ, who died, the mighty counselor, and he will do the rest in your life.
Amen. 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 Uh, thank you very much to all the members of the audience. There was a man that flew in from South Korea last week and he was troubled by, uh, he's an atheist and he found Christianity. He talked about Bob and Hatun and um, he came here. He was only, I know you're back in South Korea. Please pick up your Bible, read from the first gospel, read the letters that will be easier for you to decipher. I know you're an intelligent man and the message will resonate with you. Yes, you should be afraid. That is a good sign. The Lord is probably giving you your calling. Um, these are spiritual affairs. I cannot give you an answer. I'm a human being like yourself. But if you don't read the gospel, read it in truth.